Welcome to the last video of the three-part series. In this video, we will actually have the fun and train the neural network and then predict the power flow results. So let's get into this. Getting the data is fairly easy. So first we have to import NumPy because we saved it as NumPy files, the data. And then we just call load. And here we load um, the training data. So X train um, the test data for X is x test and we do the same for y so here we use load y train y test uh, like this y test oh it's train y train and y test and as i've said this is uh load p oh no i think we started with s gen p load p and load q stacked and this are, or these are the line loading uh, results. So this is what we want to have. And now we do the same thing as we've done last time for X. We, we create a standard scalar for Y. Um, we create a standard scalar and then we transform only the training data here because the neural network can learn better from scaled data. So here we transform the train, the, the Y train uh, X is already scaled. Okay, and now comes the fun. We import sklearn neural network, and from this we will import the the regressor regressor which supports multi output. So here, um, this we will give us um, the the line loading predictions, and verbos means it will show you some output. And then what you only have to do is call fit, and you fit on the scale data. So you fit on X train and Y train, which is 10% of the power flow results as we've seen last time. And then it's super easy as well to use. So we use X predict and then say in and predict. So give me uh, what you think the result will be for X test. So this is 90% of power flow data. And this is only 10% of power flow data our flow data and um, this will be super fast to predict. I'm going to show you that in a second. But first, uh, what we want to do is we want to create the predict value with the test value. So this is the true value here. And this is what the uh, neural network thinks the, the value should be uh, when when getting X test as an input. Uh, but it's it's still scaled. So we have to inverse transform it. So we have the data as percentage value of the line loading again. So we use um, inverse transform our prediction here. And now we can compare what, what the prediction is with X test or Y test, I'm sorry. Um, and for, for the comparison, we just use matplotlib, for example. So uh, we create a plot, just a simple line loading plot for Y test. Let's say we um, look at the first 96 time steps here for line 53. Why do I choose line 53? I cheated and looked up what is the, the line with the highest loading. So here we use this line and we give it a line style. So it looks a little bit different than the other one. And we call it a label. So we say these are the correct line loading values. And we plot the same for Y predict. So the same time steps, the same line uh, with a different line style. And this is the predicted line loading or these are the predicted line loading values. So this is what the neural network thinks. And this is what is what is true. And if we add some legend, so it looks nice. We can show the plot. And if we start it, we will see what it would look like in a second. So first we read the data, we scale Y, so only Y train. Then we train the neural network with 10% of the data and predict 90%, which is a lot of time steps and predict it from X test, which is our scaled input data here. And what you will see is that the loss decreases in each iteration so that the training improves, the error is getting less. This is what the loss is kind of, and the, the prediction improves of the neural network. And at some point it will say, I'm fine. I, I trained enough. 
and what you see here is the line loading prediction and the correct values so you see here the correct line loading values are the blue ones here and the orange ones are the predicted values and it's fairly accurate as you can see so there's only in the in the small ranges there's some errors but here the prediction is pretty good in my opinion if you want to quantify the error you can just uh, use some metrics which are included in sklearn so from sklearn you can also import some metrics here we want to have the mean square error and let's get the mean square error of the test data and the prediction data and we will print that so here you will see that the error is only uh, MSE dot well, uh, dot five so dot two uh, percent and uh, then you will see after a sec you will see that the error is only 12 percent uh, 0 0.12 percent so it's it's nearly it's fairly accurate as i've said um, if you want you can also time it because this is why we do all this so um, from the time series uh, from the time uh, module you can import time and then let's time the a and n prediction so let's predict again the data from x uh, test here and then you will see that the time is fairly uh, it's, it's fairly fast so here you will see uh, a n time is only t1 here uh, if we do that again uh, i started and what you see is that the time is only uh, 300 milliseconds for our example so predicting 35,000 times that nearly 35,000 time steps takes only 300 milliseconds I hope that you enjoyed this little tutorial about Panda Power and machine learning. Of course, it was just a very simple example because we didn't optimize the hyperparameters and we just trained on the load and S-gen values and line loading predictions. You can, of course, optimize all that, but I think it gives you a nice idea what you can do with it and why Python and Panda Power is kind of great together because then you can do things like easy machine learning, which is not possible maybe in other languages. Thank you very much for watching and if you have any suggestions or ideas always free to leave a comment or write an email.